It's very easy to associate the food you eat with external appearance-driven endpoints like body weight. But it's important to think about and understand how the food you eat affects you on the inside, too. This is important because your internal functioning directly influences how you feel, how you look, and your overall health, which includes a healthy body composition. What you eat will ultimately make up portions of your cells, skin, hair, blood transportation systems, muscle, fat, and more. The nutrients you eat are not just being transported around throughout our digestive systems and in the blood like we've talked about. They are also ingrained, an ingrained part of every cell tissue that makes up who we are and what we do. So, while the phrase you are what you eat is probably a bit overstated or at least oversimplified, it is in large part true. Our bodies are, to a significant extent, composed of the foods that we eat. Let me explain. Early nutrition recommendations focus strictly on the function of the human body. The main question for, for scientists and nutritionists was, which nutrients and in what amounts are needed to keep the human body functioning to prevent it from any obvious disease? Nutrition recommendations were basically made on a trial and error basis. Well, trial and error still has a place in nutrition, but nutrition science has evolved to be more than simply adjusting the amounts of nutrients we need to prevent disease. Nutrition science is now driven by a belief that eating should be about living to the very best that you can, living optimally, not just merely avoiding illness. Researchers have discovered that not only do the nutrients from food affect how we function, but food affects how every single process inside our cells functions as well. And in order to understand this and how each of us are made up of the same nutrients that are in the foods we choose to eat, we must begin with the basics. This takes us all the way down to the individual microscopic cell. The, structure is, the cell structure is the smallest structural and functional unit of any organism. It is the very thing that every living being is made out of. Our cells vary immensely in size, function, and chemical makeup. Each cell in our body must move, grow, consume, consume food, excrete waste products, and react to the environment it lives in, and reproduce. Cells in the human body are constantly communicating in order to make the entire organism function. They communicate in response to our environment, what you touch, and how you move. So cells bond together to make tissues, and tissues make up our organs, and our organs make up our organ system, and our organ system combine to make the entire organism, which in this case is your body. If your cells are not healthy, they will not work properly. And if the cells don't work properly, then the tissues won't work properly. And if the tissues aren't working, then the system will begin to fail. You can see how this can easily snowball out of control. Eventually, you will most likely experience increased fatigue, decreased physical capacity, improper nutrient use, and nutrient partitioning, which ultimately lead to a poor body composition, as well as some serious health consequences. By keeping your cells healthy and fed with the proper nutrients, you are keeping your whole self healthy. Consider this. The average adult body is made up of about 30 trillion cells. When old cells become damaged, new ones are made to replace them. And the nutrients we get from our food are used to make these new cells. This is the main reason why nutrition plays such a major role in cellular health, and therefore in our optimal functioning. Also, certain nutrients, like the food we eat, can protect our cells from damage and provide cells with the fuel needed to produce energy for our bodies. Just think about your cells and their need to be replaced constantly. Then think about the type of food you choose to eat. Are you choosing foods that would help make the healthiest cells possible? Help make the healthiest body composition? The best environment to be active and stay active? This now leads me to the main question for this lecture. What nutrients are needed to keep our cells healthy and what do these nutrients actually do inside your body? To answer this question, let's take an even deeper dive into the cell by looking at some of the individual cell components and discover where the nutrients that you eat fit in. 
Let's start with the outermost component, the cell membrane. The cell membrane is the boundary that separates the internal components of the cell from the outside environment. It keeps all the cellular contents safe so that they can function properly without being damaged. The cell membrane is referred to as semi-permeable, meaning that it has the ability to filter out important nutrients from damaging waste products. The membrane allows various nutrients to pass through the wall and sends the waste products out to be removed from the body. The permeability of this membrane also allows the cells to communicate clearly with one another, as we mentioned previously. The membrane must be fluid and mobile rather than too rigid and too tight to allow for optimal functioning and adaptation to the internal environment. But here's the thing, all of the dietary macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are found in the cell membrane. The most abundant form of fat found in the cell membrane are the phospholipids, which are made of a glycerol backbone, a phosphate molecule, and two fatty acids. Yes, fat is needed for proper cell structure and function. The phospholipids have a hydrophobic or water-fearing tail and a hydrophilic or water-loving head. This love-hate relationship with water is what gives the membrane its unique structure and stability. Imagine what a drop of oil looks like and acts like in water. This is what a cell looks like and acts like in the blood, but at a microscopic level. The unique geometry of the phospholipid with the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails causes them to spontaneously align into bilayers, like a sandwich where the bread would be the phospholipid heads and the inside of the sandwich would contain the phospholipid tails. This way, the phospholipids are positioned with the hydrophilic or water-loving phosphate heads facing outwards and the hydrophobic water-fearing hydrocarbon tails of the fatty acids aligning on the inside of the bilayer. So the hydrophilic heads in a cell's plasma membrane face both the water-based outside of the cell and the water-based cytoplasm on the interior of the cell. Another type of fat-related compound found in the cell membrane is cholesterol. The cholesterol improves the mechanical stability of the membrane and helps to regulate the fluidity. If the diet is too low in cholesterol, cell membrane structure can be compromised. We will discuss this more in just a few minutes. The second major nutrient found in the cell membrane is protein. Proteins play a small role in forming the structure of the membrane, but they mostly contribute to the membrane functions. They direct proper operation within each individual cell and also the healthy functioning of your entire body. You see, the proteins you eat have numerous functions in your body that go way beyond the popular thought that they only need to be eaten to help with muscle function and quality and size. At the cellular level, proteins serve as pumps, gates, receptors, and enzymes or catalysts for biochemical reactions. They're responsible for the advanced communication that occurs between your cells and they provide attachment sites for various molecules. Cellular communication occurs at all times for various reasons. They communicate to take up nutrients from your bloodstream, to excrete waste products from the body, to, and to signal chemical reactions, and more. All of this communication is completed by the proteins that are embedded in your cell membrane. Proteins serve as channels by opening and closing when the cell receives a particular signal. They also can act as information transporters for what is going on outside the cell and within other surrounding adjacent cells. Without this sophisticated communication network, the cells throughout your body will not work together and bodily functions will start to fail. Think of it like a game of telephone. As soon as one message is not transmitted or received properly, the entire message is messed up, with the end result being the wrong message or no message, ultimately creating an environment that is likely not optimal for body composition, health, or performance. Lastly, carbohydrates are also found in the cell membrane, but in smaller amounts compared to fats and proteins. Carbohydrates contribute to membrane structure and are present in the form of glycoproteins and glycolipids that are protein and lipid molecules that have a glucose or a sugar residue attached to it. These molecules also typically function to support cellular signaling.
Now that we understand how the nutrients in our food form and sustain our cell membranes, let's move on and focus to inside the cell. The next important cellular structure that is essentially built from our foods is the nucleus. The nucleus is the largest organelle or specialized structure within the cell and it contains the cell's DNA. The nuclear envelope surrounds the nucleus. This two-layer membrane is composed primarily of lipids and proteins. It also contains minerals that are needed for activities within the nucleus itself. The nucleus can be referred to as your genetic storehouse because it contains all of your personal information within this nuclear membrane walls in the DNA. Now, DNA is a blueprint for every single one of the body proteins. The proteins that make up your tissues, your organs, and your chemical messengers and more originate from the coating of DNA and the quality of the food that we eat. And for this reason, it's vital that the nucleus has a solid structure to keep the DNA safe from damage that occurs from normal metabolic and oxidative stresses, including aging itself. Nutrition also plays a role, an important role in protecting your DNA. In order to understand why the food you eat is important to your DNA, we need to quickly go over the makeup of it. And DNA is one of two very important nucleic acids, with the second being RNA. These are made of a nitrogen base, a five carbon sugar unit, and a phosphate molecule. And RNA and DNA work together to provide the codes for your cells to produce new proteins and new cells themselves. You can see how what you eat influences your DNA. Think about how important the protein you get from your diet is now that you know all of the different roles that proteins can play in your body. The final cellular structure that we will discuss is the mitochondria. You may remember the mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell from your high school biology days. This nickname was given to the mitochondria because it is part of the cell that is responsible for energy production. All of the nutrients from your food are turned into energy within the microscopic mitochondria of your cells. In fact, later in this course, I'll go through how the food you eat turns into energy for you to use to alter body composition or to power a workout. Each cell that you have contains anywhere from several hundred to over 2,000 mitochondria, depending on the amount of energy that cell needs to function optimally. Your heart, and your skeletal muscles are very hardworking organs that need a lot of energy. And cells within these organs may have up to 40% of their space occupied by mitochondria. Again, just like the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane, the mitochondrial membrane is made up of fats and proteins. The mitochondrial membrane has an inner and an outer layer, both of which play important roles in energy processes. The inner membrane is made up of about 75% protein. These proteins function in the final stage of energy production in something called the electron transport chain. The mitochondria also use many micronutrients to assist with producing energy. The B vitamins are particularly important micronutrients in the energy production processes of the mitochondria. And it's important to keep in mind that the structural and functional integrity of the mitochondrial membrane is absolutely critical to your health. If the mitochondrial structure and or function is compromised, energy production from that cell will be compromised. This mitochondrial dysfunction can contribute to several chronic diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, Parkinson's disease, just to name a few. Now, Let's try to put all of this together into a more practical understanding. The structure of your cells are made up of fats, proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. The foods we eat every single day are made up of fats, proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. Do you hear any similarities? Or is this just a coincidence? Well, definitely not. You can see now why it is often said that you are what you eat. The foods you eat have a major influence on your cellular function because they ultimately become your cells. Now, there are some very specific nutrients that can impact your internal cellular functioning. Let's start with unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats are necessary for strong cell membranes. Remember I mentioned before that the membrane is semi-permeable? 
Well, that's thanks to the fluid structure of the fats. However, saturated and trans fats are much more rigid than unsaturated fats. They don't function the same way as the unsaturated fats, and they cause membranes to be much more rigid than is optimal, potentially limiting the functionality of the cells. So diets that are too high in one type of fat, for example, trans fats, might lead to a rigid, brittle cell membrane that cannot communicate as well as if they were comprised of a better mix of fat types. This is one reason why many nutritionists recommend eating all types of fats so that one type doesn't predominate in the diet and end up altering the optimal functioning of those cells. In general, diets high in unsaturated fats will promote healthy cell membranes. Two categories of the unsaturated fats to take particular note of are the omega-6 fatty acids and the omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids are highly concentrated in foods like walnuts, almonds, and various types of vegetable oils, including corn, soybeans, safflower, cotton seed, sunflower seed, and peanut oil. These are all types of oils that are in a majority of any processed, boxed, prepackaged foods that you probably have in your kitchen pantry. Rich sources of omega-3 fatty acids include fatty fish such as salmon, tuna, cod, and trout. Some seeds and nuts also contain omega-3s, like flaxseed, but to a much lower extent. But both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids are essential for good health. However, they play very different roles. Omega-3s have an anti-inflammatory effect in the body, whereas the omega-6 have a pro-inflammatory effect. This pro-inflammatory effect of omega-6 fatty acids may sound bad. However, some infl inflammation is actually necessary, to some extent. Some amount of inflammation can help to protect the body from infection and from injury. For example, if you roll your ankle, inflammation sets in to immobilize your ankle so you can begin to heal. Same thing goes for a cut. The inflammation shows that an immune response is underway to help fight off any pathogens that might make you sick. But as you probably know, too much inflammation can lead to other things like heart disease, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, and many different types of cancer. Conversely, omega-3s are known to lower these risks of diseases by decreasing the amount of inflammation within the body. In the current Western diet, the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio has skyrocketed because of the high intake of vegetable oils rich in omega-6 fatty acids. In order pr to protect the cells from damage, this ratio needs to be decreased. To lower the omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio, you need to decrease your intake of processed vegetable oils that are high in omega-6 fatty acids, as well as increase your intake of fatty fish, flax seeds, chia seeds, and fish oil, which are all rich in omega-3 fats. Other nutrients required to maintain healthy cell membranes include high-quality proteins, fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, vitamin C, whole grains, vegetables, fruits, and lean poultry, and fish will all provide you with these nutrients to keep your cell membranes in top shape. Next, what about the cell nucleus and your DNA? Naturally, it makes sense that since these cellular components are also made up of nutrients, the quality of your food you eat can greatly impact their structure and function as well. But the DNA never leaves the protective barrier of the nucleus, so this means that your DNA is safe from harmful substances that you might eat, right? Well, not really, and here's why. Unfortunately, despite the barrier provided by the nucleus, DNA can be damaged from any excess potential harmful substances, often called toxins, circulating around in the body. Now, toxins is a term that is far too widely used by so-called nutrition experts, but you can produce molecules that damage your DNA. For example, these molecules can come from excess trans fats and high amounts of omega-6 fatty acids compared to omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. Also, there is some concern, albeit controversial, about pesticides that we may consume from processed and conventionally grown foods. There appears to be a relationship between these sorts of foods and some cellular damage over time. 
I don't think we should be overly worried because we have many natural processes to help stop or repair any damage. And just washing your foods that you purchase can go a long way in reducing that risk. But damage to DNA can also occur from reactive oxygen species or excessive oxidative stress, which can be produced as a byproduct from the energy or ATP we produce from food or even from excessive exercise. If reactive oxygen species makes their way into the nuclear membrane, they can potentially alter normal DNA functioning. If this occurs, the proteins that the particular DNA strand produced will no longer be available to your body. I think you can see how this will lead to poor functioning in your body and in worst case scenario could lead to various disease states. But here's the beautiful part. One way to protect this from happening is, once again, by eating quality sources of polyunsaturated fats. You can focus on getting these fats from sources like fatty fish, flax seeds, walnuts, and even soybeans. Other nutrients that are needed to protect DNA include high quality protein, antioxidants, and vitamins like vitamin E and C, the carotenoids, folate, and vitamin B12. The easiest way to get all of these nutrients into your diet, though, is to consume foods like lean meats, eggs, dairy, colorful vegetables, whole grains, and fruits. If you do this, you will have the best chance at protecting your DNA from excessive damage. Last, let's look at what foods most efficiently keep our cellular energy production working well. Well, as you learn about in great detail in the next lecture, the mitochondria can use the nutrients we eat to turn them into energy for everything we do. However, not all foods are created equal when it comes to efficient energy production. Most of the energy that the mitochondria produce comes from fats and glucose, or carbohydrate, that's either stored in your body or comes in from your diet. This energy ultimately ends up in the form of adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. The process of making ATP from our foods is very complex. The obvious nutrients that are needed for these processes to occur are the energy-yielding macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. However, essential nutrients that are often overlooked when talking about energy production are the B vitamins, iron, and sulfur. The B vitamins work to transfer electrons through the electron transport chain, which ultimately produces massive amounts of ATP in your mitochondria. Iron and sulfur are important components of the protein structures within the major energy producing systems of your cells and are used to simply transport oxygen around your body. If iron and sulfur are not available from the diet for the mitochondria, energy production will suffer. And just as with the cell membranes and the nuclear membranes, nutritional support for healthy mitochondrial function comes from eating foods with a lot of nutrients that are minimally processed. Things like green leafy vegetables, complex carbohydrates, and lean proteins are a great start. One thing to also understand is that some factors that have nothing to do with food can also impact your cellular health and function. For example, excessive exercise can actually cause some damage. And keep in mind that excessive is the key word here. Now, you may be scratching your head a bit and saying, I thought that exercise was good for your health. How could it cause damage? It seems contradictory, but it's actually true. Exercise naturally increases the production of free radicals, which are molecules that have an unpaired electron in their outer shell. This missing electron in these molecules causes them to be unstable and highly reactive. But to regain stability, the free radical molecule works to steal electrons from healthy cells in your body. And when this happens, the free radical leaves the healthy cell damaged and unable to perform its usual functions. This free radical damage doesn't stop with just one cell. Once the one free radical attack occurs, it sets off a domino effect. And the newly damaged cell moves on to other healthy cells as they attempt to become neutral again. A single chain reaction can lead to thousands of damaged cells just from one intense bout of exercise. And excessive free radical damage has been associated with accelerated aging, 
cancer, diabetes, and coronary artery disease. Now, don't let this scare you too much, and don't stop exercising because these potential free radical attacks might occur. Because luckily, our bodies have the ability to fight free radical attacks by forming three natural antioxidants known as glutathione, catalase, and superoxide dismutase. These substances donate extra electrons to free radicals and prevent them from damaging healthy cells. The major problem with exercise occurs when it's too extreme, causing the production of free radicals to exceed the body's ability to produce antioxidants. For example, a study conducted at Hebrew University in Israel, in conjunction with the National Institutes of Health in Maryland, looked at this exercise-induced oxidative stress. 31 men completed a six-month, five-days-per-week training schedule that involved two very extreme 30 and 50-mile marches while carrying an extra 77 pounds or 35 kilograms of weight. Well, not surprisingly, after these long marches, there was significant cellular damage. There was also significant increase in liver enzymes, indicating more work being done by your liver and possibly liver injury. So here it was clear that excessive exercise led to increased oxidative damage, causing cellular damage. This study was in men, but my lab has also seen excessive cell damage in ultra-endurance athletes of both sexes. This again does not mean you should shy away from all intense exercise, because your diet can help ward off this exercise-induced oxidative stress. Once again, the answer is that a diet that includes lots of fruits and veggies that are full of antioxidants such as vitamin C and vitamin E, vitamin A, and selenium. A great newly researched post-exercise supplement to reduce oxidative stress is tart cherry juice. It's loaded with antioxidants. Now, before you think that sitting on the couch is a way to avoid even worrying about excessive exercise damage, you need to keep in mind that being still and sedentary can also have a negative impact on cellular health and integrity. You see, it is well known that sedentary lifestyles are associated with increased cardiovascular disease, atherosclerosis, overweight and obesity, diabetes, accelerated aging, and more. And it's amazing just how long we sit every single day. Yet again, reactive oxygen species are involved here. Oxidative stress plays a major role in these dysfunctions, and what people may be unaware of is that not only does excessive exercise cause this stress, but complete physical inactivity also causes this. In fact, researchers from Germany compared the effects of physical inactivity, or doing nothing, with voluntary running in mice. And after six weeks of remaining completely inactive and doing no physical activity, there was a significant increase in markers of cellular damage, vascular dysfunction, and an increased production of the antioxidant superoxide dismutase. That was likely produced to prevent the excessive damage that was going on. Overall, the results of this study and several others suggest that sedentary lifestyles can lead to increased oxidative stress and vascular dysfunction. The logical conclusion we can draw from these two extreme cases, extreme exercise and complete inactivity, is that leading a physically active life, but not excessively active or sedentary, will help keep our cells healthy happy, and functioning to the best of their ability. Ultimately, this sort of cellular environment is exactly what you want for optimal functioning. This is where you will have the best chance of using the food you eat to provide fuel and nourishment rather than excessive storage as body fat. This means that your cellular health is involved in creating a chance for you to optimize your body composition. Now, before we close out our discussion on cellular function and how nutrition is so much a part of cellular health, I want to briefly touch on a fairly new scientific research area called nutritional genomics. Nutritional ge genomics is the study of how our genes interact with environmental factors and most specifically, the bioactive compounds of food. 
As you have learned, your DNA holds all the information necessary for the development and function of your body. The genes within the DNA are responsible for coding for all of the proteins that carry out your cellular functions. As the study of nutritional genomics evolves, scientists may one day be able to help individualize your nutritional needs more efficiently than ever before. With this knowledge, you could one day even choose foods that have a medicinal and health benefits that are specific to you. For example, it is well known through nutritional genomics research that cocoa and red wine both contain bioactive substances that can help reduce the risk of heart disease. However, the components of cocoa may not be beneficial for lowering your risk of heart disease, but they may lower mine. And conversely, the effects of red wine may not be advantageous to my health, but they may be for yours, all because of the differences in our genetic makeup. The same things could even be said for why certain compounds like caffeine or even certain medications work better for some people than for others. More information will come from that nutritional genomics research in years to come, but right now we know that the foods you eat serve as the building blocks for your cells, and you can understand now why it's said that you are what you eat. Simply put, your body is only as healthy as the foods you eat. Just like a car, if you put low-grade fuel into your car, your gas mileage would not be as high as it would if you filled your tank with premium. However, once you start to fill your gas tank with premium-grade fuel, over time, your gas mileage will begin to soar. The engine will run clean, and you'll get a lot more life out of your car. And just like your car, your body needs premium-grade fuel to run as efficiently as possible. Sure, it can run on poor, on poor food choices, but not optimally and not efficiently. Our bodies work to replace billions of cells each day, and the nutrients we eat are the building blocks for these new cells. If the cells are built correctly, our bodies will have no issue growing, developing, and flourishing. If the cells are built with errors or with low-grade materials, our body is at risk for developing disease and ending life early. A healthy diet accompanied by physical activity is the recipe for healthy genes, healthy cells, and ultimately, your best body composition and health possible. So try this. Try eating more omega-3 fatty acids to decrease your omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio. Now we need to learn about how we produce energy from the food we eat and which food choices might be best based upon your activity level. Well, bioenergetics is the process of converting the compounds of the foods we eat, like carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, into a usable form of energy. Bioenergetics then relates directly to your metabolism. And metabolism is the sum of all the energy transformations that occur in your body. This could be anything from